Good morning. Good morning. Let me welcome all of us here this morning to another worship service. We are gathered together. Amen. 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 God is good. All the time. All the time. Oh, come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout for the to God's Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout for the to our God delights in our praise. We will praise, praise God as long as we live. Amen. Yes, praise God. Amen. And we're all here. Welcome to each and every one of you. It's good to have Fran and his mom Lorraine with us. It's Fran is Joyce's grandson. And we're great that you're both with us today. Glenn, Debbie's son, finally came home from the hospital after 10 days. He still has a fever record of being in the hospital. Mm -hmm. She told him he doesn't have to work on that. So, <laughs> pray that he continues to do well. And Sharon Grass is out, went to the emergency room and she's having some tests done. So we're going to keep her and her heart condition and whatever is happening with her in her prayers. It all turns well. Are there other concerns with Joyce? Okay. As far as announcements, um, we have Bible study on Wednesday and prayer on Saturday. Um, Mary Bailey and Helen Howlett's birthday. Aiden and Bryce Grinion are turning 17 this week. And Bruce McLaren and Sarah Stone, Laura Stone's birthday. Yeah. Um, and Greco has said that she would be in charge of coffee hour. So if you'd like to do coffee hour, please see Ann after church today. Appreciate that. July 13th is the Habitat Home Blessing on J Street, if anyone would like to go to that. Fundraising committee after church during fellowship hour next week.
Heavenly Father and our God. Your name is glorious and wonderful. Everyone on earth and heaven sing about your wondrous works. You are the King of all and we worship you as our Lord. We gather in your presence in unity of our faith to ask that you bless us. Without your power and grace, we can do nothing. We pray that your glory continues to fill and radiate within our lives so that we can be your ambassadors to the world. Let none of us leave this building today empty-handed. Father, we dedicate our lives to you in every area. You have a plan for us in every area of life. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 tells us, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Thank you, Father, for the joy of obedience. We will obey you with joy. We want to have the spirit of obedience in our life, not rebellion or pride not resistance or hard-heartedness, but a, a soft, sensitive heart that is willing to do your will. Thank you that your love can be seen in our lives. May your church, O oh God, this church be like a city on a hill, shining your light in the darkness of this world, and that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present or future, neither height nor depth, or anything else in our preaching will be able to separate us from your love. Thank you that you are our provider and protector. We pray this morning for the sick. You control our, all parts of our bodies. And you know when things are not working right. You know when we are in pain. The sickness leaves us stressed and steals time for all other things that we could be doing. We ask you today to touch sick bodies. You know those who are not sickless. Even those we do not know this morning, we lift them up before you and ask God for healing. Pray that you will strengthen their bodies, even in time of sickness. And help us to be patient to do your work in us. And if doctors are involved, give them wisdom. And thank you for providing them the help they need. Finally, O oh God, we pray for the land in which we live, our country. We ask your blessing. Where we are divided, we'll be united. Where there is darkness, shed your light. Where there is ignorance, grant us wisdom. 
and where there is despair, restlessness, and hopelessness, give us hope. You are our refuge and strength, a very present help. In trouble, in good times, all the time. So we trust you now with our present and our future. For we ask these mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shall we repeat the Lord's Prayer? Our Father. Timothy 4.12 and 
and Matthew 5.16. Do not let anyone look down on you because you are young, but be an example for believers in your speech, your conduct, your love, faith, and purity. In the same way, your light must shine before people so that they will see the good things you do and praise your Father in heaven. We're going to take the mornings Times on offerings, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. to do. We ask for continued blessings in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
straighten this up. And we are presently studying the book of First Timothy. And I find myself being ahead of the Bible study in <laughs> preaching from that book. Last week I preached from First Timothy and when we went to study, it was that, that chapter was very familiar to the group. So I'm um, in chapter 4 today. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 20. It reads, Do not let anyone look down on you because you're young. But be an example for the believers in speech, your conduct, your love, faith, and purity. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O God. Grant us receptive hearts and minds, for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. The Apostle Paul list six attributes of a believer. Attributes that will allow our light to shine. And so when I looked at that, it came up with the topic, be an example. The text implies that Timothy was exhorted to be an example to the believers in Ephesus. But I want to exhort us to be an example to everybody. I'm expanding that. We are to let our light shine. So I chose St. Matthew 5 verse 16, let your light so shine before men. Let your light shine before all mankind so that they will see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Paul says we become examples of the believers by Living the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the only way we become examples of believers. Again, by living the gospel of Jesus Christ in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit in faith and in purity. The word for example in the Greek means to become a pattern, become a pattern for Christian living. So whoever looks at me or looks at any one of us By our lifestyle, they'll see a pattern. And when they see that pattern, they, they, they should we come to a conclusion that that is how it is to live a Christian life. And then they may turn to the Bible and see if how we live is in accordance with the Word. No, no magazine is going to help them. 
It is, it is the word. No, no, no social media is going to be authoritative in this respect. It's going to be the word of God. So let's look at the first four attributes. Next week I look at the last two. I link the first and the second. So first, we are to be an example in word and in conduct. Be an example to the believers. Be an example to the community in word and conduct. Being an example in word and in conversation. You see, there is a difference between imitating and being an example. You see, we can always copy someone's action. We can always copy someone's word. But if we are an example, it is not just copying, but it is who we are. There are many Christians that just copy actions that they think should be right. But when you get them alone, they are different altogether. Jesus doesn't want us to just copy an example. He wants us to be an example. So people, sometimes people say, well, a pastor ought to live good. I don't have to live good or that good. I can slip up now and then, you know. I don't have to be an example for anybody. That's not my job. That's, that's, that's the pastor's job. You may be right. In one way, but you ought to be an example too. Remember I told you last week that you are a little Christ? You remember that? Those who weren't here, listen to the listen to the service. It was, it was aired this morning. And you'll get what I was trying to say that you are little Christ. Be an example. So example first in speech. How are you going to be an example in speech? Put off falsehood. You know, some people, some people um, have problems with truth telling. But you, you don't have a problem here. Everybody here is truthful. But let me say it anyhow. Avoid falsehood. Speak the truth. Ephesians 4.25 And say no to unwholesome talk. No coarse comments. No slanderous remarks. And no angry rhetoric. Let your speech be full of grace. And Paul says, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each other, how to speak to one another at home, at work, in the community. Be graceful. Say no to obscenity. Curse words. Foolish talk. You see, in the world today, there is a profusion of profanity. 
at the workplace, at the marketplace, and just in the business place. I work for the federal government. And sometimes I thought I was on a ship with <laughs> sailors. And you thought people were angry? No, that's how they talk. I work for the state now, New York State. No different. <coughs> Sometimes talkers, oh, Reverend, and so on. And some people just pretend like they didn't see me. <laughs> Let us speak to others with love and respect, ever keeping our language clean and avoiding words or comments that would wound or offend others. Sometimes our words wound others. Our words offend others. Paul says, be an example. Think before you talk. Let us follow the example of Jesus who spoke with tolerance, who spoke with kindness throughout his ministry. Be an example next in your conduct, in your walk. What does the word conduct mean? The word conduct means matter of life. Be an example in your matter of life. How can we be an example in conduct? It means be an example in our everyday life. All day long, including our action in the church. A lot of people are good at being an example in church. You look so pious <laughs> and holy and sanctimonious. But I really like that every day, all the time. Some years ago, I was pastoring in another country. And there was a resident who died. And all the pastors refused to bury him. And they came to see me. And I said, yes, I will. I will do the funeral. When there were just a few people at the funeral, And when I asked for people to come up, family and friends, to come up and say something on behalf of the dead, people were hesitant. And one lady came up. And she called his name and she said, everybody knows who he was. And what he was. And she went back and she took her seat. Because she learned not to say bad, bad things about the dead. But he was the kind of person whose conduct was something else. Our conduct is how we act. How we behave. Our conduct is our behavior in every situation. James 1 verse 23 tells us to be doers of the word, not only hearers of the word. Do the word. Live the word. Live it. That it could be, it can be seen, it, it's observable. The second thing is that Paul challenged Timothy to be an example in charity. It's the same word for love. Paul defines charity as the pure love of Christ. How can Timothy be an example in love? Who is supposed to love? Well, first, love God first. 
You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Love God. And you must love your neighbor. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew 22, 39. You know, some people have it hard to love anybody else. And they love their children. They love their, well, some of their, they may love some of their siblings. <laughs> and, 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 and they may love their parents. And they may love one pair more than the other. But that's, that's what it is. They have it hard to love. But Jesus made no exception. He says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. I said some time ago that we are far from that. I haven't reached that point yet where I really love my neighbor as I love myself. I'm still working on it. I am, I am, I am on, still under construction. God hasn't finished with me yet. And if there's anybody here this morning who loves your neighbor as yourself, come let me shake your hand. We are in process. Just think about it. To love someone as you love yourself. Maybe when we get to heaven, and then we can sing, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing it shall be. Because you're going to feel so liberated and free and delivered so you can love as you are to love. But right now there are some, some issues that prevent us from loving others as we love ourselves. But why should we love? 1 John 4 verse 19 says because he first loved us so we can be an example in love and i'm talking about sincere love i'm talking about having the right attitude in love i'm talking about love in action not just in words i'm talking about loving everyone friend neighbors and even our enemies so as we make Jesus our example, let us bless others. To bless others is to say a good word. A good word on their behalf. And finally, we are to be an example in spirit. In spirit. To be an example in spirit as far as Timothy was concerned. He was supposed to follow the Holy Spirit's guidance. When it comes to matters of the Spirit, Jesus gave ample warning. He says, before I go back to heaven, I will send you help. I will send you the Spirit. I will send you the helper that he will guide you in all truth. John 14 26 that he will guide you and so we are admonished in Ephesians 5 verse 8 to be filled with the spirit some people have a problem with that what does it mean to be filled with the spirit Christians ought to be filled with the spirit so that you can be example in the spirit when we ask God to fill us with the Spirit, it's like being a glass filled with water and it's overflowing. The things of God will pour out of us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit of God. Be filled with the power of God. Christians are not to be weakling, just sinning all over the place. Every day you are in sin. When you are filled with the Spirit, you have the power to, to stand.
jump and skip and to, to walk through the, 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 the domain and the stronghold of the evil one without being soiled. Be an example in the spirit. To me, it means that we should strive to exhibit in our lives fruit of the spirit like kindness, gratitude, forgiveness, goodwill, temperance, patience, perseverance, long-suffering. These qualities will provide for us a spirit which will touch the lives of those around us. Live so that your, your life touch us. When they come into your presence, they feel a power. They feel a difference. They feel that you are in the presence of somebody greater than yourself. Paul says, I live yet not I, but Christ who lives in me. The power of God. Pray for the Spirit to be in you, to be consumed. You are consumed by the Spirit, enveloped by the Spirit, and yes, engraved by the Spirit. It has been my opportunity and privilege to meet some people who are filled with the Spirit. You too, it's my pleasure to be in your presence. I look forward every Sunday morning to come and be with you. Wednesday morning too. I'm excited about Wednesday morning, believe me. For Bible study. Can we experience a special feeling when we are together? A, a feeling that makes us want to associate uh, and to do the common thing is follow up the word. And when we do that, we radiate the light of Christ. So what have I just spoke about? Being an example in word and in conduct. Being an example in the spirit. Being an example in love. It is often difficult to be different and to stand alone in the crowd. One of the problems why many of us are not effective in being an example, we don't want to stand out in the crowd. We don't want to say, oh, that's a Christian there. Oh, uh, that's a Christian. Uh, yeah, that's a Christian. We, we, we want to be in the crowd where, you know, nobody has to single us out. You know why I wear my collar? Everybody knows who I am. Everybody knows, except one lady and her little girl came up to me at the, at the, the gas station and said, Sir, um, what is that thing around your neck? What is it? Is that your uniform? <laughs> I said, yes, it's my uniform. It, it's the color. And I explained to them what it was. And she was intrigued. She has never seen it before. But it, it identifies me as somebody kind of different. Can I stand out in the crowd? I went to vote and I wore my color. Come this way, Rev. Come around. Come around here. Right? I said, you are the only Reverend we see this morning. I said, no, it's because others didn't wear the color. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I always, want, you know, it keeps me, it keeps me, you know what I'm saying? It keeps me in place. It keeps me as an example. Oh, I can't afford to do what others are doing. Because when I wear this, everybody knows who I am and I ought to be an example. In word, in conduct, in love, in spirit. So don't be, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Psalm 27 verse 27 says, 
The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? You can't be afraid to stand for Christ. As we make Christ the center of our lives, our fears will be replaced by the courage of our convictions. Life is not perfect for any one of us. And at times the, the challenge and the difficulties we face may become so overwhelming, causing our light to dim. Our lights get dim sometimes. Huh? Dim sometimes, not too bright. <clears throat> That's why Jesus leaves that charge. Let your light so shine before all people that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. It has nothing to do with how you feel. They didn't ask you how you feel this morning. Let it shine. You may be having some bad times. Let it shine. You may be having some doubts. Let it shine. You may be going through a time of grief. Let it shine. You may be going through some time of uncertainty. Let it shine. Let your testimony be this. This world has lost its grip on me. Nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Nothing. Have you found peace with God in being an example? Elizabeth Hewitt says, my faith has found a resting place. Not in device or creed, I trust the ever living Christ. His wounds for me shall plead. I need no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died for me and that he died for me. And therefore I can be a living example to all for Jesus' sake. Christ said, get excited, get excited about walking out here and being an example in word, in conduct, in love, and in spirit. Amen and amen. Amen. So we're going to take the name of Jesus with us. Yeah, because he's the supreme example. Take the name of Jesus with you.
that, I really love that song because it, it tells me how privileged I am to take that name of Jesus with me. We are privileged. We are privileged to be an example to others. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for the word. Your word tells us that this word of yours cannot come back to you void. It must accomplish its purpose. So we thank you for that which has been accomplished today. You have spoken. May this word continue to reverberate in our hearts and our minds. And if someone is here that needs to yield to your word, to accept you as your personal Lord and Savior. We pray that there will be no procrastination, but that will be done today. Today, if you hear his voice, harm not your heart. Amen. Amen. Before I pronounce the benediction, I just want to issue a word of invitation to those who are within driving distance who watch our program that we are open, the doors are open, and we invite you to come on in and worship with us in person. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you. Come on, your husband. Good to see you again, Pamela. Thank you. Yeah. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.